Welcome, vibrant viewers, to today's episode of Healthy Living. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., is a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University, USA. For more than 40 years, Dr. Campbell has been at the forefront of nutrition research. Dr. Campbell is the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book The China Study, which summarizes his research in nutrition and concludes that a pure, vegan, meaning animal-free diet, is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Dr. Campbell was invited in July 2009 to share his work and life-changing messages with audiences in Singapore. While he was in Asia, Supreme Master Television had the good fortune of speaking with Dr. Campbell about the vegan diet, health and climate change. First, many of us have been told that milk and dairy products are good sources of protein. Is this really true? Let's hear from Dr. Campbell, who worked on a dairy farm when he was young. You know, we are. We're the only species in the face of the planet that continues to consume milk beyond the so-called winning period. The indigestible protein in cow's milk actually causes a negative chain reaction in the bodies of infants, children and adults. Uh, because the protein in reality stimulates the growth of cells and the growth of the body and the growth of cancer cells, you know, faster, let's say, than other proteins. Animal proteins tend to do that. And the, so it's the protein of the milk that seem to cause so many problems. Protein also does some other things too. When, for example, it's not completely digested down to its constituent amino acids, and, and maybe there's little, little uh, chains of amino acids that are remain undigested. We call them peptides. Those things get absorbed into the blood, especially in an infant. And they look like foreign proteins, which they are. And so our bodies produce antibodies against them, which are very specific for just those, that string of amino acids. And then those antibodies turn around and find the same string of amino acids in the cells of the pancreas that's responsible for producing insulin. So the antibodies being produced against this foreign protein in turn, turn against, you know, a, a similar sequence of amino acids in the pancreas and therefore destroy it. And then that leads to type 1 diabetes. Dr. Campbell advises on the best way to provide nutrition to precious infants. The best advice of all is for the mother to continue nursing for at least one year, maybe even as much as two years, but at least one year. Uh, that's the natural order of things. And, and then if a woman cannot nurse or not nurse long enough, a plant protein based powder is probably okay. It's not as good as mother's milk, of course. We have to understand that. And as soon as the baby can get onto water as a source of hydration, they should do that. In a previous interview with Supreme Master Television, Dr. Campbell explained that at least 50% of the greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere are a result of the livestock production process. In other words, meat consumption is driving climate change. Here is an update from Dr. Campbell on an issue that concerns the very survival of our planet. Although yet it's uh, unofficial, there are a couple of individuals, very significant people, who have been making this report and looking very carefully at the numbers. And um, their conclusion now is that the contribution of livestock production to global warming is more than 60 percent. It's not the 18 percent which was first suggested three or four years ago. It's not even the 50-some percent was suggested a short while ago. I find this estimate to be staggering. And obviously it's not known by almost anyone. It's been accepted for publication in a professional journal. It's going to appear in October. What 
are the implications of this critically important finding? They've made quite a convincing case. I mean, the implications of that are, are enormous. Mm -hmm. And it's enormous in the context of a couple of points. One is that the principal contribution to the global warming from livestock is methane rather than CO2, carbon dioxide. And that's important because methane has about 25 times the capacity on a molecular basis of absorbing energy. So it's much more tenacious with respect to its activity that way. Um, secondly, and this is probably even more important, the half-life of methane once it goes up in the atmosphere is only about eight or nine years, so I'm told, whereas carbon dioxide is maybe 75 to 100. So what this means is that methane's up there now. If we stop producing methane, it'll begin to decline much faster in a reasonable period of time. Whereas even if we reduce CO2 production by 20%, which is about the highest we can get the politicians to agree to, that's not going to make any difference at all, really, right. for two or three generations, if then. So uh, that's why this message is so, so important. What do we choose to eat? It's uh, it maybe the most important of all. We will pause now for some brief messages. When Healthy Living returns, we will have more of our engaging interview with Dr. T. Colin Campbell. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living. We are speaking with Dr. T. Colin Campbell, the renowned co-author of The China Study and Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry at Cornell University, USA. Healthcare costs are rising for governments, corporations, and individuals across the globe. In countries like the United Kingdom, where healthcare is provided free of charge, it was recently reported in the Belfast Telegraph that the cost of treating the 60,000 diabetes patients in Northern Ireland alone is over 1.5 million US dollars per day. And a growing number of such patients is forecast by Diabetes UK, a charity, to eventually collapse the National Health Service, Britain's healthcare delivery system. In the U.S., people pay for most of their health care costs through health insurance, which has historically been provided as an employment benefit. For companies, the costs of providing this benefit have skyrocketed in recent years, with many now deciding to no longer offer coverage to their employees. For individuals without any form of health insurance, paying for treatment of a serious health condition could cause financial ruin. Dr. Campbell points out that adopting a vegan diet significantly limits health care costs because the lifestyle keeps people healthy in the first place. Plant-based diet creates health, prevents disease, and the benefits are enormous, especially in terms of the control of health care costs. Health care costs can be reduced substantially if for example, everyone were to switch over to a whole foods plant-based diet. For companies that basically are providing the insurance for their employees, they see advantage in making their employees healthier. And we have evidence now that programs, we call them wellness programs in these companies, that the amount of savings is substantial. For example, for every dollar spent in one of these programs to promote health in these people, they save at least three to five dollars in health care costs. That is a substantial so-called return on investment, three to one to five to one. Dr. Campbell shares his ideas on how to broaden awareness 
on such important subjects as the vegan lifestyle and its direct connection to health, the causes of global warming, and other similar critical issues with the public. My view, especially having worked at fairly senior levels in policy development, that you know we could, for example, take this information to the public from the top and let it come down. I mean, that sounds pretty good and can be helpful, maybe, but I've decided that's not the way to do it. What we need to do, a much better way, is take the information from the bottom, grassroots. If we can convince people, or at least inform people, you know, of this information effectively, so they can make decisions in their own interest, then it has a much better chance of growing and spreading. Because give a good product to the public that really works, make it affordable, make it convenient, that's a, that's a recipe for spreading it. We have to be aware of how important this information is. Then we have to articulate it to the public. Let the public decide. They will decide. I have no doubt about that. Dr. Campbell feels that physicians can be the leaders of change by promoting the vegan diet. We also should at the same time take advantage of the people who are best trained in health and medicine. So I'm talking about physicians. Even though physicians these days are not trained in nutrition, for example. Medical schools don't teach nutrition. But we have a lot of good people in medicine. And the reason they got into medicine was to help people. That's what they were there for. And I lecture to a lot of these groups, and they haven't been informed of this. And when I lecture to them, I find a lot of them are upset. Why didn't I hear this before? So I'm saying, okay, let's put this program together. Let's, let's invite all these people in who are so professional, so well-trained. Let's inform them, and let's let them take a lead in making this happen at the public level. Here are some final thoughts from Dr. Campbell. I would uh, like to speak to the viewers of the world the, to uh, take notice of what Supreme Master Television is doing because it affects you know, your lives as well as the lives of the planet. I mean, all the way from inside of the little cells where all this works together, all the way up through bodies and people and planet and on to the universe. I mean, it's a, it's a holistic message. So when people make decisions based on this information that Supreme Master Television is doing, when they make decisions, whichever level they sort of make the decision at, or whatever happens to interest them at that point in time, it's going to actually relate to a much larger issue. There's no question about that. With heartfelt sincerity, we thank Dr. T. Colin Campbell for his time and generosity in sharing with us his extensive knowledge on nutrition and for his calling on humanity to switch to the healthful and compassionate vegan diet. May many more across the globe hear his message of hope. Thank you, beloved viewers, for your company on today's episode of Healthy Living. Coming up next is Science and Spirituality, right after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May you always be in the pink of health. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.